So detoxification, the art and science of detoxification is a good topic and it's a very wisely chosen title because it's an art, it's a so-called empirical th science, it's around since a long, long time. Um, and then obviously there's a science to it because sometimes you notice art has its limitations. And science is a good marriage with art as science has its limitation and art is a good marriage with science. So having both of these things together gives us the best of both worlds. Now, I've just been in, in Germany, actually in Baden-Baden for a medical conference and uh, it struck me that the spa concept in Europe is so profoundly different than the spa concept in America. So if you think about going to a spa what are you thinking about? Massage. Huh? Massage. Massage. Wraps. 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 What else? Relaxing. Relaxing. Mud bath. Mud bath, maybe tampering, paper, uh, the tampering, uh, being pampered. Relaxing. Relaxing, you know, maybe some facial. It's mostly beauty oriented. Mostly beauty oriented. The Euro European spa concept. It's profoundly different. It's health oriented. It's basically detox oriented. So while America is for pleasure, Europe is for pain. No. <laughs> you might want to detox your pen from your sock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Very important. So, very interesting if you think about it. But that comes because uh, detoxification has a long tradition and it doesn't here and uh, why would you want to go through this stuff if you can just get a massage and a facial and a little bit of nice schmear around you, you know, and it smells wonderful. Why would you? Why should you? Well, toxins. And toxins are around us and toxins have always been around us, but in the last 40, 50 years they're around us significantly more than they ever have been. Now, what are toxins? Obviously the natural toxins and that's what the body is made for, to detoxify our natural toxins. So if you, for example, work out like wild and produce lactic acid, yeah, an acid in your body, the body will detoxify that, the liver does that. If you produce, eat, eat too much, whatever, uh, steak and your uric acid goes up, the body detoxifies that. Whatever you have in your gut, all the good and not so good things produce toxins. Yeah, bacteria produce toxins, fungi produce toxins and uh, so that produces a toxic load which then goes through the, through the, um, through the gut into the vessels, end up in the liver and sometimes ends up in your brain, yeah, not being able to think clearly after you eat. Uh, it's a sign of gut toxicity and then the liver has to ultimately and the other detox organs have to, whatever that toxin is, break that down and create a harmless end product out of it. Detoxification. That's what we're made for, yeah? Natural toxins. Now, obviously, then there are so-called so xenobiotics, alien substances to our body which are uh, toxic um, in, in a multitude of, of ways. Our body is not made for heavy metals, for example. We have never in our history really got in contact with heavy metals uh, until uh, industrialization started and until the dentists had this in the 1800s already. Um, initially they were called the quacks because they worked with quack silver, yeah, quacks had this wonderful idea to put mercury in our mouth, yeah, in the form of harmless dental fillings, uh, dental amalgam. And then obviously the triumph of the chemical industry which then produced about up to now I believe 80,000 chemicals which are in our environment of which we follow uh, about 600. Okay, so we're living in a sea of chemicals. Many of them are unknown in their toxicity because the current uh, requirements are such that um, these chemicals have to pass through a minimal, minimal requirement and are let free 
uh, and then often five, ten years later, the first diseases start, another five years later, that we have some studies, another five years later, they're outlawed. If you look at chemical after chemical after chemical, it's been in our common use, um, that has been the pattern. So now we are obviously having chemicals in our food, yeah, preservatives, coloring agents, uh, rests of toxins from wherever the food was grown, antibiotic residues, uh, which are not 100% supposed to be there. I just read that basically 100% of all chicken you eat out there have antibiotic residues, which is wonderful because you don't need to take antibiotics yourself, so it's probably very healthy. I would recommend you <laughs> having lots of chicken, uh, non-organic, obviously. So that, and then, um, we are surrounded by a sea of uh, chemicals. If you look under your, under your sink in that department, the cleaning department, you will basically read a concoction of different chemical names. Many of them you know, but if you look them up, then there is something called, neuro, this is called neurotoxic, this is cell toxic, this is procancerogenic, and it's not 100% proven because we don't know for sure, and what have you. Uh, then there is cosmetics, a huge thing. Women do have a higher toxic load than men in general due to cosmetics, which many of them are toxic and chemicals. And as you know, there are many people who don't tolerate these things, increasing numbers of people who don't tolerate these things. Um, if you go to a uh, department store or to IKEA, you get the so-called IKEA syndrome, which is headache. You can't think after a while clearly and just want to run out there. Uh, you know, so I don't know whether you experience that, but if you experience that, you probably do have some toxins in your system because you react to toxins if you have them in you. Okay, because there's a sensitizing to that. You're chemically sensitive because you have been exposed to toxins. So this headache comes not from nowhere. Um, and you can basically look wherever you want, air, what have you. Now lately we have uh, electrosmog and all these different appliances we can't do without anymore. Um, did you hear about this study where most uh, youngsters only would take a job if they're unemployed, only would take a job if they have access to their, to their phone and to the internet. Yeah, because being connected and is more important than having a job. Yeah, connectivity. <coughs> is a wonderful thing and uh, I was even thinking, you know, not even doing our meeting here anymore, but maybe just to talk it and then you can load it down because then we don't have to meet in person, which I tried to avoid in the first place. <laughs> but that's where we're going, it's just amazing if you think about it, yeah? that's where we're going. Soon partners will talk on the internet with each other and hardly meet, so we'll see how it goes. Electrosmog. Now, the, the effect of electrosmog, for example, is disputed. We do know that in the last uh, 10 years, whenever it was, uh, brain tumors in children uh, took over leukemia. Both of them have been discussed to be connected to electric and electromagnetic fields. And where there's an electric field, there's an electromagnetic field. And um, people with chemical sensitivities who are the yellow canaries of the trait uh, will very clearly tell you when they're close to some significant electromagnetic field, they will get headaches, they can't think clearly, their concentration goes down, they get stomach ache, they get fibromyalgia, they get fatigue, they can't sleep, they're a mess, basically. Yeah, it's, it's just unbelievable. And obviously that's not true for everybody, but for many people. And then last but not least, there's this interesting connection with toxic emotions. Another study that recently came out that people who had sexual abuse in childhood have a higher risk of heart disease later on in life. Now, you know, sexual abuse and emotional trauma, early deep-seated emotional trauma, and higher risk of heart disease. Now that follows a model and an understanding which you probably have felt yourself if you remember last time, or think back, the last time you got a cold or a flu, um, and you had this phase of muscle aches. Now it turns out that where you have this muscle ache in the first few days of a virus coming on, 
um, is very significant because it shows you where potentially you are tight. Okay. So whenever I get that, I normally get in my shoulders. And uh, you know, when I had the last beginning of a flu, I thought I have headaches, and then I noticed I actually was the beginning of a flu. Uh, I don't get flus very often or colds very often, so it was, I didn't quite get it in the first day. So now, how does this go? If you have an early conflict, or for that matter, any conflict, but early life conflicts, um, which let's say there is this sexual abuse or any other, whatever it is, you will then, in a certain part of your body, wherever that abuse affected you, have a constriction of vessels. Because your brain regulates the autonomic nervous system, your body, and that basically creates a stress response. In that respect, let's say, this person has a difficulty to trust, to love, to be open, to be vulnerable, obviously. Yeah? It's a defense mechanism against the abuse. That will lead then to a subtle form of vasoconstriction, just like my subtle form of vasoconstriction, because that's where I hold my stress. And in that area where your blood flow and your lymph flow then is restricted, toxins will accumulate. Okay? So toxins will accumulate, and in the case of people with sexual trauma, toxins will accumulate in the heart, amongst others, and there will be a higher incidence of heart disease. Okay, it's a kind of an interesting model how this works together. And that's the truth in general. There's something called uh, synergism. That means if you are exposed to some heavy metals, not all too much, just because you're eating fish once a week and have some dental fillings or had had some dental fillings, and then you're exposed to some chemicals, not even all too much, the two of them will have a synergistic effect. And the toxicity between these two components, often one plus one is five or ten. Yeah, sometimes even more. An over-additive effect of two chemicals. Now we're living in a sea of hundreds of different chemicals and nobody has the slightest idea, the slightest idea what these effects are, but I can guarantee you there's an over-additive effect. Yeah, so, and science always studies one substance, that's the nature of science, against everything else, but that's not our reality. So a model where you study 600 different chemicals and the interaction of it is basically something we might hopefully be able to handle in a few hundred years, but certainly not now. So we're living basically an experiment. And this experiment leads eventually to a risk of disease due to your own susceptibility. Now what do toxins do in the body?